so let us discuss our uh, first topic. So that is the uh, the set. Okay, so if we say set, basically this is the collection of any objects of uh, any kind. So it can, it can be a group of objects having the same uh, character, characteristics or uh, properties. So example, we have a uh, set A and it's uh, corresponding elements 1, 2, uh, 3, uh, 4, open and close uh, bracket. Uh, another example, let's say we have set B with the elements A, uh, B, C, then uh, D. So usually for the grouping, we use a uh, bracket, then uh, for the name of the set, we use capital uh, letters. So this is one way how to present a given set. It's the name of the set and its corresponding uh, elements. So we have uh, two ways two ways to present a given uh, set. Uh, we call them the set notations. So if you say set notations, how to describe or how to present a given uh, set. So we have the first one, this is the roster notation. So if you say roster notation, we enumerate or we do the listing of the given elements of a given uh, set. So basically we do the uh, list or a uh, listing of elements. The second one, we have uh, this is the set builder notation. Set builder notation are also known as the uh, role method. So for set builder notation or role method, we need to discuss what are the characteristics of a given element so that that element can be, uh, be uh, that can be added to a given uh, set. So usually, if we do this uh, procedure, we need to write uh, the properties of the given elements. So we need to discuss the properties or the details of a given elements okay, to satisfy uh, that this element should belong to a given uh, set. Okay, so these are the set notations. So it's either the roster notation or the set builder notation or also known as the uh, rule method. Then we have, as after set notations, we have the different types of uh, sets. Okay, so first one, on our list, we have the finite uh, sets. Okay, so for finite sets, uh, basically, if we say finite, we know the limit of a given set. We know the first element, we know the last uh, element. So for example, and what can be our example for our finite set? So, for example, that we have the seven days of a week. So, we call it as set A. What are the seven days of a week? Let's say we have Monday. Uh, let us use small letter. We have Monday, uh, let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then we have Saturday and uh, Sunday. So this is, a, this is an example of a finite set. We know the first element and we know the uh, last element. So what is the next type of a set? We have number two, that is the opposite of finite set. That is the, we have infinite set. I saw our infinite set. So for infinite sets, we may know the first element, but we will never know what is the last element. So an example, Let's say example, this is set A. Uh, let's say what is, uh, let's say uh, set A has the elements of all positive integers. That is, let's say positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, up to, okay, up to an infinite positive integer. So we don't know exactly what is the last positive integer. So that is an example of an infinite set. We may know the first element, but we will never know what is the last uh, element. Okay, the next, so we have finite set, infinite sets. Okay, so our uh, third uh, type of set. And number three, we have the uh, null set. 
So null set or uh, basically an empty uh, set. So if we say an empty set, it contains no element. So we may use okay, just an open and close uh, bracket, an empty uh, close and open bracket, or we use the symbol uh, P. So this is for a, a null set. And we have number four, we have the, uh, these are the disjoint uh, sets. So for disjoint sets, for example, we are considering two sets. So we have disjoint sets, these two sets have no common element. So example, we have set A with the elements 1, 3, and 5. Then let's say we have set B with the elements 2 and 4. So we have two sets but no common element. Disjoint sets. Then we have number 5. What is the opposite of disjoint? We have, and for disjoint, the opposite is a joint, or the joint sets. So for joint sets, for example, again, we are considering two sets. Now, this time, these two sets will be having common elements. So we have example, uh, set A with the elements 1, 3, 5, and uh, 7. Then we have, let's say, set B with the elements, uh, let's say we have 2, 5, 7, and Nine. As you can see, uh, we have set A and set B. Will be have, we have common elements. You have five and a uh, seven. So we have uh, this is our example for uh, the joint uh, sets. Alright, so after the joint sets, we have the unit set. This is number six. So for a unit set, it is a type of a set that composed of, okay, from the name itself, unit one element. So we have set A, for example, with the element of, let's say, small letter A. So an example of a unit set, an L, a set that contains one element. Then we have number seven. Uh, this is the universal. Uh, the universal set are also known as the general set so for a general set it contains all the elements of a given uh, discussion for example we have two sets inside a larger set I uh, set A with the elements let's say 1, 2, 3 and set B with the elements let's say 4, uh, 5, uh, 6 uh, let us assume that set A and set B are inside a, a larger uh, set, that is the universal uh, set. So what, will, what are the elements of universal set? Uh, we have the elements uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, 6. So it will contain all the elements of the uh, discussion. Or, so for example, we have set A and set B are in that discussion, or uh, the elements of the universal set will be the sets of the uh, two smaller uh, sets. So for example, that we have common elements between A and B, no need to rewrite that in the universal uh, set. So what is the opposite of a universal set? The opposite of a universal set is we have number A, this is the uh, subset. So a subset, a smaller part, We say subset, it is just a part or a portion or a division of a given, a larger uh, set. Or it is a uh, subset. So example, okay, we have set A with the elements A, a B, and a C. So we'll be writing uh, the first type of subset. This is the proper subset. A proper subject, a subset, let's say that is a set B with the elements, uh, let's say A and okay, A and B. Why is it uh, called as the? Why is it B a proper uh, subset? So a proper subset will contain a uh, less the uh, will contain a fewer elements from the uh, original set. So from the original set, we have the elements A, B, and C, and set 
subset B contains okay, only two elements, A and uh, B. How do we write that? So we have subset B or set B is a proper subset of set A. So we are using this as symbol. If we have an uh, if we have a proper subset, we have an Alright, so we have an improper subset. Okay? So let's say this is a D. So with the elements, let's say the elements of a set D is the same as A, let's say C and a B. So why is it called as the improper subset? If a given subset contains all the elements of the original set, that is a or that is an improper subset. So containing the elements, all elements of the original uh, set. So how do we write this one? We, uh, we write D as an improper subset of uh, set A. We have number 9. We have equal or uh, equal sets. So basically, from the term equal sets, we have, let's say, uh, set A is equal to uh, set B. So what are the elements of set A? The elements of set A, A, B, C, and a D. And we have set B with the elements A, B, C, and a D. So the same cardinality, the same element. That is four uh, equal sets. Then we have the next one. This is number, let's say number 10. Yes, number 10. We have the equivalent sets. So for equivalent sets, let's say we have A is, uh, set A is equivalent to set B. We have the same num uh, number of cardinality, but we don't have the same uh, elements. For example, we have uh, set A with the elements 1, 2, 3, and uh, 4. Then set B with the elements A, a, B, C, and D. So we have the same cardinality, okay, four elements uh, each, but we don't have uh, similar elements. So one, one, to, uh, one, one, one to one correspondence, so we have one is to A, three is to B, three is to, uh, three is to C, and four is to uh, D. So these are the uh, types of uh, sets. If we proceed to set operation, for set operations, we have the first one. This is the a union of uh, sets. So if we say union of sets, for example, we have two sets. Uh, let's say set A or the union of set A and uh, set B. We have to list down the elements or uh, elements in uh, set A or in uh, set B or okay, for both sets or in uh, both sets A and uh, B so for example we have uh, set A with the elements let's say 1, 3, 5 and uh, 7 and let's say we have set B with the elements uh, let's say this is 2, uh, 5, 7 and uh, 8 so how do we write the uh, how do we write the union of set A and uh, set B? So we have let's say this is one. I, we have two, three. As you can see, we have common elements five and seven. I no need to uh, rewrite the common elements. I no need to write it twice. So we have only a, a common element a uh, five, common element a uh, seven and a uh, eight. So this is the corresponding uh, set of elements that represents the union of set A and uh, set B. That is 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and uh, 8. Alright, this is our, alright, this is uh, one of these set of relations, uh, the union of uh, sets. Then we have the next one. So we have the intersection of uh, sets. 
So, for example, we have set A or the intersection of set A and uh, set B. So, inverted U. So, we are basically we are do uh, to do the listings of the elements or elements in both uh, set A and uh, set set B. So basically, if we say intersection, we are just uh, dealing with the common elements. Alright, we are just to list down the common elements from both uh, sets. So for example, we have a set A or the intersection of set A and a set B. Alright, for example, we are using this as example. So we have the set, uh, set A with the elements 1, 3, 5, uh, 7. Then we have the elements of set B with the uh, elements of set B 2, 5, 7, and 8. What are the common elements for both uh, sets? That is the uh, intersection of the sets A and B. So common elements we have 5 and 7. So therefore, the intersection of set A and set B, we have 5 and a 5 and 7. Alright, so these are the first two uh, set of operations. We have the union of sets, basically. You are to add up all elements, no need to rewrite the common element. Then we have set B, intersection of sets. All we have to do is write down the elements that are both in uh, that are both in uh, in both sets. Or elements in both sets. Or basically we are just dealing with the common elements. Okay, then I will uh, discuss the next next two operations. If we proceed to the third one, uh, this is the complement of a set. Uh, for example, we have complement of, uh, let's say complement of set A is the same as A prime, for example. So we are dealing with the elements. So we're just dealing with the elements in the universal set, but not in our uh, set A. So example, alright, for example, we have a universal set with the elements one, five, uh, seven, eight, and uh, nine. Uh, let's say we have set A with the elements, let's say one, five, and uh, seven. So how do we uh, write? The elements of the complement of set A. So it's the complement of set A. So again, elements in the universal set but not in uh, set A. So what are the elements of set A? We have 1, 5, 7. 1, 5, 7. We are just to remove these elements in the universal set. That will be the complement of uh, set A. So therefore, okay, we have... The elements in the universal set but not in set A, we have only the elements 8 and 9. That will be the complement of uh, set A. Then we have a uh, letter D, for example, we have the complete, uh, relative complement of a uh, set. Alright, so for example, this is uh, let's say a relative complement of set B in uh, set A. So we write this down as uh, the A minus uh, B, that is a uh, set A minus B. So we are just dealing with the elements in uh, set A that are not in uh, set B. So example, we have the elements of set A to be, let's say, 1, 5, 7, and uh, 9. So let's say the elements of set B as 1, uh, 5, 6. So what will be the equivalent uh, relative complement of set B in uh, set A? So we write that as A minus a B. 
All we have to do is uh, remove the common elements okay, of the two, or we have to remove the elements that are present in set B in uh, set A. So we have, uh, basically we have element 1 and uh, 5. So the remaining elements of A, we have 7 and 9. So these are the elements in A that are not in uh, B. So A minus 5, we have only 7 and 9. So this is our example for the relative complement of a set.